All right, today we're talking about quantum entanglement in consciousness in the brain. I've seen a few articles pop up about this over the last year or so, or at least a similar concept. And I saw one article posted a little over a week ago on the site Popular Mechanics by someone named Darren Orff about a study that just came out this past month. And I decided I wanted to talk about it. One, because it has a lot of cool words in the title. Brain, quantum, consciousness, radical. This article doesn't mention it, but I read an article a while back that had a title that was something like Microtubules Create Quantum Effects in the Brain or something like that. It sounded sick. And two, because this is one of those topics that seems like it could have some kind of like profound significance, you know, like regarding the meaning of life and existence and everything like that. Because as far as I know, quantum mechanics is a field of science that we don't really understand well as a species. I'm not a big physics guy, but I do know that Einstein had a lot of trouble accepting quantum principles and their uncertainty. Because when you simplify quantum mechanics, it's all about probability, I think. At large scales, the universe is pretty predictable. We know that the Earth will spin on a 24-hour cycle. It'll go around the sun in about 365 days. If you let go of something, it falls to the ground. Every night, the sun turns into the moon. Sun. At night, it's called the moon. Etc. And the vastness of it can make us feel pretty small and insignificant. But at tiny scales, like smaller than atoms, it becomes a lot less predictable. Einstein didn't like that because it messed with a lot of what he had worked on like his whole life. You know, regarding like gravity and planets and atoms and such. And we still don't really understand a lot about the quantum world, which I personally find pretty exciting. And because we don't understand a lot about it, it lets us do a lot of imagining, which is a lot of fun. And when it comes to quantum mechanics potentially having something to do with consciousness, for me it feels right up there with all the theories of everything that humans have been coming up with since we first became conscious. Like when we believed the sun was some kind of god, or when we invented computers and came up with the concept of us living in a simulation. Because based on what we currently understand, the quantum world almost seems like the foundation that all other physics is built on. And if our brains and consciousness somehow rely on the very foundation of the universe to work, well, that's an idea that makes me personally feel special again. Less like humans are insignificant specks in the cosmos and, and more like our existence is linked to the fundamental laws that explain the universe somehow. Like we're supposed to be here for some reason. Which is maybe part of why research like this grabs people's attention. It provides hope in a way. So could the way our brain works on a quantum level really explain why existence exists and why we're able to perceive it? Well, let's get into the article. It starts by discussing how people think of the human brain as being similar to a computer, but how that's really an oversimplification. They then suggest that the brain is more like a quantum computer. Aha. Uh -huh. But also, not really. But maybe. The study is about the concept of quantum mechanics and how it might explain how our neurons are brain cells work together. Quantum entanglement is what Einstein called spooky action at a distance, which I always thought was a hilarious way to describe something so sciencey. I won't get into too much detail about quantum entanglement in this video, partially because I don't really understand it. I think all you need to know is that it's possible for two particles like uh, photons or electrons to be linked together. Particles this small will both behave incredibly randomly and in a way that we can't predict what they're going to do next. Based on super complicated experiments that some physics YouTuber could probably explain better, we're strongly certain that even these particles don't know what they're going to do next. But when we check what one particle is doing by measuring it with an instrument, we can know what the other particle is doing. Like maybe if we check one and it's spinning clockwise in an instant, we can know that the other one's spinning counterclockwise. And this is no matter how far apart they are, almost like they communicated at the speed of light or faster than the speed of light. But based on what I've read, I'm pretty sure scientists also don't think that they're communicating either. So it's all very confusing. The study, published this month in the journal Physics Review E, suggests that a fatty material called myelin that surrounding the nerve cell's axon, the fiber that transmits electrical impulses to other nerves or body tissues, provides an environment in which the entanglement of photons is possible. This could potentially explain the rise of cognition and especially synchronization, which is essential for information processing and rapid response. Consciousness within the brain hinges on the synchronized activities of millions of neurons, but the mechanism responsible for orchestrating such synchronization remains elusive. The results indicate that the cylindrical cavity formed by myelin sheath can facilitate spontaneous photon emission from the vibrational modes and generate a significant number of entangled photon pairs. Now all of that might sound even more confusing. What they're basically suggesting is that neurons evolved to use quantum entanglement to communicate in a synchronized way, which would be pretty cool. And given that we think the synchronization of neurons ultimately has something to do with consciousness, the researchers made the jump that quantum entanglement might have something to do with what creates our consciousness. Well, first of all, this research was just done using mathematical models. They'd have to come up with some way to prove this experimentally using mice or something for the research to really hold any weight. 
And the researchers acknowledge this, with one of the leading researchers in the field even admitting that it became popular to bash them. Second of all, even if they could prove this is true, a lot more research would need to be done on quantum entanglement in the brain to really understand if it had anything to do with our existence. So to answer my question from earlier, no, this research doesn't really seem to prove anything about the meaning of life or existence or anything. But plenty of scientific theories that once seemed insane have become irrefutably true in the past. The Earth revolving around the Sun and not the other way around comes to mind. So who's to say this research isn't one of our very first stepping stones into what could become the most impactful scientific discovery of all time? Or maybe it's just a fun thought experiment that gives someone like me something to feel important about. Let me know what you think in the comments and tell me what you think about this topic in general. Maybe I'll do a deeper dive and talk about other research in this field sometime soon. See you next time.